Okay, so here's a quick review on the cell membrane structure. <clears throat> so if you remember, we have three names for the same thing. Uh, science always likes to be confusing. So we have the cell membrane. If you remember from organelles, this is what controls what goes in and out of the cell. It's what we call semi-permeable. Now, another name for the cell membrane is the plasma membrane. Okay, so again, membrane is the same, plasma changes, there you go. And then finally, there is a third name for this, and this is the one we're going to talk about today, and this is the phospholipid bilayer. So the phospholipid bilayer. The cell membrane is just kind of generally what we refer to it as, but the phospholipid bilayer is really how we explain chemically how the layer is made. So let's actually break apart this word. So we've got phospholipid bilayer. Okay. So there we go. Phospholipid bilayer. Now, when I look at this, I can see phospho. Right, so phospho is the first part of that. So phospho refers to the element phosphorus. So we know that part of it is made of phosphorus. Now lipid is a new term that is new to us. And lipid is a macromolecule. And lipids, remember, refer to fats. So oils are lipids, cheeses are lipids, all sort waxes, all those sorts of things are fats. Now, on the next one, we see the term bi. And bi, if we think like a bicycle, simply refers to two. Right? It's a number. And then layer is kind of self-explanatory. So phospholipid bilayer is phosphorus fats to layers, or two layers of phosphorus fats. Okay, so two layers of phosphorus fats, that must be what the cell membrane is made of. Two layers of phosphorus fats. Okay. So the phospholipid bilayer is made up of what we call phospholipids, and a phospholipid is actually, it looks like this. Okay right there. It's kind of what it looks like. So we have a circle on the top and we've got these kind of squiggly lines down on the bottom. So this part right on here is what we refer to as the head. Okay, and these two things right here are what we call the tails. All right, the head and the tails of a phospholipid. You can kind of think about it like your body. You have a head and you have two legs, right? Yeah, you might not have anything in the middle, but a head and two legs, right? There you go, head and two legs. So we got to start breaking this apart. The head is the part that is made of phosphorus, okay? So this is the phosphorus head. Right there. The tails are the part that are fats, okay? So these are actually made up of the monomer of lipids, the fatty acids, okay? So these are what we call fatty acid tails. So we have a phosphorus head and fatty acid tails. So let me just go ahead and write in head here. Phosphorus head and fatty acid tails. Okay, so that takes care of the phosphorus fats. We'll get to the two layers later, but we will talk about the rest of it. Now, fatty acids, fatty acids make up lipids. Lipids are things such as oil and waxes. And if you remember that when I actually put oil with water, they don't mix. So if this is the same thing, this is what we call hydrophobic. And hydro refers to water, and phobic refers to phobia or fear, okay? So um, agoraphobia, arachnophobia, claustrophobia, if you're afraid of being in a closet, small spaces, phobic means fear. 
So the fatty acids have a fear of water. They don't like water, they don't want to be around water. Likewise, the phosphorus head is actually what we call hydrophilic, okay? So we might have heard of phobic before, but philic might be a little new to us. It's just the opposite of phobic. Phobic is fear, philic is love, okay? So hydrophilic means this part loves water and this part hates water, but they're connected together, right? So that might pose a problem later, hydrophilic and hydrophobic. Now, we're gonna introduce one more new term that might seem a little confusing. And that term is polar and nonpolar. So polar and the head is polar. How can I kind of how remember this? I've got phosphorus and polar, P, P, okay? Polar means it has a chemical charge, right? So there's something a little extra to it that pulls it in a certain direction. This part is nonpolar which means it doesn't have a chemical charge. That's a very simple definition of polar and nonpolar. And as we start moving more into biochemistry or when you get to chemistry next year, you'll learn more about what those terms mean. But we'll go into it in just a little bit here. So a phospholipid, phosphorus head that likes water and has a chemical charge. Two fatty acid tails, that are hydrophobic, they don't like water, and no chemical charge. So that is a phospholipid. Now, we've got two layers of these though, okay? And so my chemistry professor in college would always say like attracts like. So like attracts like. And what he meant by this is, is polar is going to be drawn towards other polar molecules. Likewise, nonpolar are going to be attracted to nonpolar molecules. And you can think about this also in terms of water. Hydrophilic molecules are going to be attracted to other hydrophilic molecules. They both like water. Hydrophobic, they're going to get as far away from water as possible, so they might also be attracted to other hydrophobic molecules. Not, well, not all hydrophobic molecules are going to be attracted to other hydrophobic molecules, but for the purpose of today, we're going to say that. So like attracts like. Polar and polar, nonpolar is attracted to nonpolar, hydrophilic, hydrophilic, hydrophobic, hydrophobic. Okay? So if I've got two layers, I've got one layer, there's one phospholipid, and here's my second, here's a phospholipid, and I've actually run into a problem. So yes, I have my phosphorus head and my fatty acid tails, and I've got two layers, and it's a bilayer. But if you remember, this part is nonpolar. And this part is polar. So that kind of poses a problem. They don't want to be around each other. This part is also hydrophobic. Whereas this part is hydrophilic. And so here we've just got a lot of mismatching going on that doesn't really provide a lot of benefits to the cell. So what happens is, is the cell finds a way to fight this by actually reversing the way the layer looks. So the actual phospholipid layer looks like one layer will look like this, and then the second layer, oops, there we go. The second layer is actually going to be turned upside down. Okay. So then I could draw a second one right here. I could draw another one up here, and on and on and on. You can draw your whole layers. You've got your two fatty acid tails, and each tail is connected to one phosphorus head. And I just made a very messy bilayer. But chemically, it works because these are nonpolar. They do not have a charge. These are also nonpolar. They don't have a charge. And I still follow my rule of like attracts like. 
nonpolar and nonpolar. Right? Now, these are also both hydrophobic, which means we don't like water on the inside, which is actually really, really helpful because that means we can put water on the outside of the membrane and water on this side of the membrane and it won't actually get in the middle here because these are hydrophobic. So this hydrophobic area keeps this water on both sides actually allowing us to have a membrane. And this also works chemically because these are hydrophilic. They want to be near the water side of it. And this side is also hydrophilic. So that is how the structure of the cell membrane works in terms of phospholipids. These heads are going to face as much water as they can. These tails are going to get as far away from the water as they can. Just like there's water on this side, these heads are going to be attracted towards that, and these tails are going to be turned around. And that's okay because these tails are attracted to each other.